Hey guys, how you going? Today I'm going to show you how to check your engine vacuum. Um, you really only need one tool, which is this, uh, you need a vacuum gauge. I built this out of stuff we had at work. Uh, we just have all kinds of weird stuff where I work. But you could use a Mighty Vac or anything, you could buy it from anywhere. I also used this um, scan tool because that allowed me to read the map sensor. So I was able to do some math with the map sensor and the vacuum gauge and that was able to tell me what the atmospheric pressure should have been so I could go look up the atmospheric pressure and I knew if I had a vacuum leak or not. Okay to do this you're gonna have to remove both the um, front part of the engine cover and also the air box to access all the hoses. There's four places where you could check the vacuum of this car, and um, one of them is one of the breather hoses, and the other one is the once the either side of the evap system. There's two lines that come out of the intake, and then the other one is the line that goes to the map sensor. I'm going to show you the line that comes out of the passenger side of the passenger side of the evap system, and the other one that comes out of the passenger side of the um, breather hoses. It doesn't matter where you test your system, you should get the same reading everywhere. If you're not getting the same reading, then something's damaged in, one, in the system that you're isolating by disconnecting. So when you test by the breather hoses, you're testing the entire system, evap everything. And when you're just testing like I did right here, where I isolate the left, you're going isol to isolate part of the evap system. So then you'll be able to tell if the EVAP system is working properly or not because if your vacuum is lower when you're connected to the EVAP system, that means that you have a leak in your EVAP system somewhere. Alright, the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go ahead and hook up your vacuum gauge to whichever ho vacuum system you decide to hook up to. I'd suggest hooking up to the breather system. Make sure and plug up whichever hole that you leave. And that's just because the breather system will, if you hook up to one of the breather lines, it'll test the entire system. Alright, a vacuum test is incredibly important. You could learn a lot from your vacuum system on your car. So, at idle, you should have between 17 and 21 inches mercury of vacuum on your car at idle. Now, you open your clothes, you quickly open it and close it. When you open it, your vacuum should drop to two inches mercury and when you let go of it it should jump to around 25 inches of mercury this is your engines in good condition if that's what happens now if you're at an idle and it's steady but it is reading lower than 17 inches then your rings are then there's a chance that your rings are warm so then to check that when you open and close your throttle quickly like in the previous test you will it will jump to zero inches mercury and then come back down to 22 inches vacuum this will more or less confirm that your rings are probably worn out now at a steady idle if you have an intermittent drop of three or five divisions and then returns to normal your valves are sticky okay at 3000 rpm if the pointer fluctuates, and as you make the engine faster, the pointer fluctuates faster or more, you have weak valve springs. At idle, a fast fluctuation between 14 and 19 inches of mercury indicates worn valve stem guides. Excessive pointer vibration at all speeds indicates a leaky head gasket. At a steady idle, if you have a drop that happens continuously, then you have a burnt valve if you read between 18 and 14 inches of mercury continuously at an idle you have incorrect valve timing or you have a major vacuum leak or very bad compression um, if you read steady between 14 and 16 inches mercury at an idle your ignition timing is off okay if at an idle it drifts between 5 and 19 inches mercury you might have a compression leak between the cylinders if it's at an idle, it's always below 5 inches mercury. You have some kind of manifold leak or a massive vacuum leak. Um, if you just blip the engine, like real quick, and it drops to zero, your reading drops to zero and then recovers relatively quickly, 
or real quickly, your muffler and your exhaust system is good. Now if you do that, you give it a blip and it takes a long time for it to drift down and then it takes a long time for it to return to normal, your muffler or your, uh, more likely with these cars, your catalytic converter is clogged. All right, what I was doing with the OBD2 scanner was I was pulling up the live data for the uh, map sensor. The map sensor will give me the absolute pressure inside the manifold of the engine, which is what it's supposed to do. And then I would take the vacuum reading that I'm reading from the line, and I add those two together, and that should give me about what the um, atmospheric pressure is outside. Now, for every 1,000 feet up an elevation you are above sea level, you can add an inch of um, fudge factor into that. But you still should be pretty close to whatever the atmospheric pressure is, which today for me and almost everybody is generally around 30 inches mercury. Okay, in my case, when I tested at the breather hose, I was getting about 18, 18 and a half um, pounds, or inches mercury, excuse me. And when I tested in the front and I isolated the half of the EVAP system, or I basically isolated the entire EVAP system, I was getting 20 inches mercury. So I was getting a leak. There's a leak in my EVAC system somewhere. I don't necessarily know where it is. Um, I checked, and one of the one-way valves looked like it was put in backwards. So I turned it around. Um, it got too dark for me. I didn't have time to go back out to retest it. But I turned around the one-way valve, and I'll see how that affects the way the car is acting here right now. All right, guys, that's it. It's a real easy test, but it can tell you a lot about your engine. So, you know, hopefully I was a help and I didn't confuse you more than you were when you started. All right. Do you have any questions? Leave a comment, email me. Thanks, guys. Bye.